Hello and welcome to hashtag our doc talk. This is North Bay Healthcare's effort to reach out to our community with local physicians and answering questions on important health information. I'm your host, North Bay social media and online specialist Robin Miller, and with me today is Dr. Thomas Erskine. He is the medical director of the Wound Care Center at North Bay. We're going to be talking about wound care and um, all the special things that North Bay has to offer. So let's just start with that. Why, uh, what are some of the reasons that somebody would come to North Bay and have to be seen for wound care? Uh, well, we'll start off with the obvious reason and, and that is if they have a, a wound. Uh, most of the patients that come here typically are being seen by their primary care doctor or their surgeon or sometimes their podiatrist and they just have a, a chronic wound that just isn't, isn't uh, uh, responding to just the normal uh, basic treatment that, that can be provided in their doctor's office. Uh, and uh, they need either more intensive treatment, meaning they need to be seen once or more times a, a week, or they need some more specialty care type dressings. And uh, those are the people that are often referred to us by their uh, doctors or their other specialists. Um. Are there certain health reasons that somebody might have a wound that just doesn't respond to normal treatment? Uh, there are. Um, a, a lot of our patient population um, that we see here in the wound clinic do have uh, other uh, health uh, problems, most of the time some chronic diseases. Uh, um, they can range from uh, diabetes, which is a, a common one, to, to other diseases where they're on specialty type medications that interfere with their immune system, uh, or uh, uh, prednisone is a common medication that people are familiar with, and, and some people are on it for their lung disease, uh, and it can interfere with healing. Um, uh, so those are common things. Probably the most common uh, uh, health um, problem, I, if you want to call it a problem, are, are people that have swelling in their legs. Uh, and uh, th that can be from, from, you know, many reasons, either sitting uh, in their house or sitting too long uh, where they develop swelling or uh, other issues with their vascular system. Um, so that's a, a large population that we see. Uh, and then a, another common, but not, not um, uh, you know, as, as common here is people that have other circulation disease where they're just not getting enough blood, not getting enough oxygen to uh, their lower extremities, usually their feet. Um, um, and, but they're often seen by our vascular people or vascular specialists, uh, but that, that, those, are, those are the more common uh, health-related health reasons that people have non-healing wounds. So is this a big issue nationwide? I mean, how many people typically in the country you're dealing with this? Um, it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have access to all of the numbers. I can tell you that uh, the most common uh, reason that people have wounds, and, and, and we see it here all the time, and that's, uh, as I mentioned uh, just a minute ago, uh, people that have some kind of swelling in their lower legs, uh, it's estimated, I saw numbers estimated about 25 million people um, in the country uh, have some sort of venous uh, insufficiency uh, and uh, um, many of those people are affected with, with ulcers. Um, and then there, there are, are millions of people as we know uh, who have diabetes and, and a, a, a good percentage of them at some point in their life uh, will have uh, ulcers of their feet or their lower legs um, that that uh, bring them here. Uh, and I know Solano County has a high incidence of diabetes, so it's not yes. surprising that you see a lot of those. But I'm curious because when I think of diabetes, I think of blood sugar and insulin. And what does that have to do with healing a wound? Could you explain why diabetics may have more of a problem with this? Uh, sure. Um, Lots of reasons. <laughs> uh, mo I guess the, the most common uh, thing that, that uh, um, 
we see are, are and, and people who have had diabetes a long time can, can attest to this, is they get uh, what's called neuropathy uh, in their feet uh, or their lower legs, but most commonly in their feet. Uh, most of the time it affects both of their feet. And they, um, the, the diabetes disease uh, affects the nerves that, that uh, uh, um, cause them to not, not feel properly. So they may have some outright numbness or they just may not sense, uh, they may not have the, the same sensation. So they may not feel hot and cold the same way that you and I. Uh, they may not uh, notice that they're developing a blister when they're wearing a shoe. Uh, and sometimes all it takes is one day uh, in a new shoe and, and they develop a blister that they don't know that's there. Uh, and that blister then will break down and, and cause a sore. And if it gets infected, that sore can become large or deep uh, and serious, uh, literally in the matter of, of days, uh, which is why most you know, of your primary care physicians and your podiatrists and, and we here at the Wound Center ask our diabetic patients to look at their feet every day, mm -hmm. especially at the end of the day, um, so that they uh, can recognize any new changes in their in their uh, feet if they've developed a new blister, uh, if they're developing calluses, uh, things like that. Um, that's probably the most common, uh, but just the diabetes disease itself, uh, it affects it affects our white blood cells. Uh, it affects the body's ability to fight infection. So oftentimes, if they get a wound somewhere else, it can be a skin tear. It can be. Uh, uh, um, uh, anywhere really on their body. Uh, they're more susceptible to boils and, and abscesses, things like that, that normally the body would just take care of uh, on its own and, and it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, the diabetes affects their white blood cells ability to take care of those small infections and so they become larger infections or more serious infections uh, and, and develop into ulcers often. Um, well, scary stuff, so it's important to stay healthy and don't get diabetes, but yes. sometimes you, you can't do that. So let's talk about some of the options available for patients with non-healing wounds. We'll start with the, the sexy one, the hyperbaric treatment. What is that and, um, and how does it work? Uh, it, it, it's an exciting treatment. Okay. Unfortunately, I, we have a lot of patients who come here and, and, and if they, they know from a friend who's been treated here, or they, they, sometimes their doctor brings it up, says maybe you can you know, be treated with hyperbaric oxygen. Uh, we'd love to treat uh, a lot of people with hyperbaric oxygen because we feel like it, it, it does a, a good job. Unfortunately, uh, it's a, uh, a hard uh, type of, of uh, treatment to do uh, research and studies, even though there's ongoing things, uh, ongoing studies all the time. Uh, Medicare is very, uh, um, very frugal in, in what they will accept uh, uh, um, or what they will, will um, cover uh, mm -hmm. for patients. A lot of, a good, popu a good percentage of our population uh, have Medicare, and so we have to go by their, their guidelines. Um, so the most common uh, reasons that we treat people with hyperbaric uh, oxygen, uh, again, are diabetic uh, wounds, and not just any diabetic wounds, but they have to be serious diabetic wounds that are often involving the bone, mm -hmm. and we're trying to prevent some type of amputation. Um, that's, that's our ultimate goal right. uh, when we're using hyperbaric uh, oxygen. What um, does it mean, hyperbaric? What is it, can you explain a little bit about just physically what happens what are you doing uh, in, in our case and, and in many in many centers uh, across the country uh, we have what's called a monoplace uh, chamber and it's a uh, we, we lay, lay people down there there is yeah the picture probably doesn't do it too much justice but <laughs> uh, but you basically lay down on a on a soft gurney bed and that gurney bed rolls into this hyperbaric chamber. It's kind of like a half dome. Uh, it's all clear. Uh, you can see outside. Uh, and uh, we have TVs set up so people can watch movies or their favorite TV shows. Uh, but once they're in that hyperbaric chamber, uh, there is a, a pressurized um, uh, door that we have to close. And in order for hyperbaric oxygen treatment to work, uh, we generally 
uh, pressurize that chamber. Uh, and and I, I tell people, if you're familiar with scuba diving uh, or anything in the water, it's, it's the same amount of pressure as if you were to go underwater about 30 feet. Mm -hmm. um, so scuba divers often will go, you know, 20 or 30 feet or, or deeper, but, but our pressurization is about 30 feet. And then the chamber gets filled with 100% oxygen. And so that combination of 100% oxygen and pressure uh, uh, causes oxygen to be to act like a drug, which is why it's FDA, FDA approved in certain conditions, uh, and and it helps treat certain certain wounds, certain conditions. Um, Can you explain why oxygen in your blood is going to help? I mean, what is it doing? Certain, you know. It, just as maybe take a step back, one one very common condition that we treat that people, even some doctors, aren't aware that we treat, and that's a, a late effects of radiation treatment. Mm -hmm. So uh, men who have had radiation treatment for prostate cancer, women who have had radiation treatment for breast cancer, often after several years, the, the skin and the tissue that was involved in that radiation uh, becomes damaged and it becomes, it loses some of its uh, blood vessels. Uh, so one thing, or uh, a, a common thing that, that uh, uh, hyperbaric oxygen treatment does is it, it encourages the, that tissue uh, that lacks blood vessels to create new blood vessels. And, and the same thing goes with wounds. A lot of times these chronic wounds are lacking the ability to, to create new blood vessels. And you have to create new blood vessels so that you can, um, the body can in, can sort of send all of the the things the body needs to send to, to help heal that wound um, and and it helps create new blood vessels and, and in addition to that most of the chronic wounds because of the inflammation and the infections that may have been there they have a, a relative lack of oxygen compared to the rest of the tissues just around them mm -hmm. so the the combination of, of the 100 percent oxygen and pressure increases the oxygen uh, levels in that in that uh, tissue that's damaged, mm -hmm. um, and that helps heal wounds. Amazing. Antibacterial dressings and medications. How is this different from like regular dressings or bandages you would get at your doctor? And what role are the antibiotic resistant bugs playing in these cases? Uh, well, for one. It, we encourage, we give it a little bit of an education to all of our patients that, that come here. Uh, there's a lot of, of myths and, and false notions out there about wounds, uh, uh, and oftentimes people, you know, and doctors uh, believe that wounds will heal well if you just leave them open and let them dry out. Uh, and uh, that's not the case. It's been shown in the literature that wounds do better if you cover them uh, and keep them covered and don't let them dry out and develop a scab. Uh, um, but so if, if we keep them covered, uh, they're liable to heal better. Um, some wounds drain a lot, some wounds don't drain very much, so we have a wide variety of, of types of dressings that we use to, to uh, help control the drainage, and we have certain dressings that will sort of add a little bit of moisture to the wounds if they're dry. Uh, the antibacterial uh, dressings, they're kind of, uh, they're, they're expensive, they're mm -hmm. fancy, they're talked a lot about, but most of the time they're not needed. Uh, all of the antibacterial creams and ointments over the counter, um, <coughs> most of the time they're not needed um, because uh, they've never been real, they've never been shown to prevent an infection in the wound. Uh, the one type of dressing that, that has uh, gained a lot of attention and, and use are the silver dressings. I was and, ask you, uh, what is a silver dressing? They're, they're, all the, they're all of the same dressings that we use, like uh, f people that might be familiar, just foam dressings or alginate dressings. Uh, 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 they're coming out with dressings every day, I think. <laughs> uh, but they, they impregnate the dressings with silver, uh, little, little, uh, 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 areas of silver and that once that dressing is on the wound over time and, and gets moistened by the wound the silver is allowed to to go into the wound and the silver actually is a, a good antibacterial type of uh, uh, um, medication for lack of a better word uh, it, it uh, um, 
helps kill the bacteria and it helps prevent bacteria from from growing and, and getting larger so um, some of our wounds uh, um, especially if they have a little bit of an odor that usually indicates that there's more bacteria than than there should be and that can help delay healing so the silver helps get rid of that bacteria for you know simplicity reasons and and helps helps uh, uh, get rid of the odor in, in most cases uh, because we're getting rid of the bacteria and and in doing that it helps the wound uh, heal a little bit faster um, how big of a problem is the like I said the the uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria that's out there uh, I mean you hear the horror stories all the time but yeah it well I, it, I mean, it, it's a big deal if it happens but how how often is it happening it is. It, it it is a big deal. I think it's it's uh, it's a big deal nationwide. Um, we deal with most of the time the the after effects. Uh, people that have serious infections uh, that uh, um, are resistant to these antibiotics, uh, they may go to their doctor and get treated with a, a regular antibiotic that most of the time works but if they have one of these resistant uh, infections it doesn't work and and the infection gets worse oftentimes creates a wound and and that's where we mm -hmm. come into to play um, the the wound beds themselves sometimes have these resistant organisms um, so far we've been lucky and silver in, in the dressings have been working well um, there's there's obviously a big concern that Silver may not work forever. Maybe these anti uh, uh, these these uh, drug resistant bacteria or even normal bacteria will become resistant to silver. Yeah. So I think it's important that we all uh, our wound center wound center uh, colleagues you know don't overuse the silver dressings uh, just like our all of our colleagues uh, don't overuse antibiotics. And if um, you do get antibiotics, take them all. Take, yes. Take them until you feel better and stop. Right, yeah. right. So can you talk a little bit about um, collagen, growth hormones, live cell skin substitutes? What is that all about? <laughs> Sounds fancy. Well, they're, and expensive. <laughs> yeah. uh, but <laughs> yes, they're, again, just like the dressings, I, I think uh, uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of research, a lot of innovation out there uh, with these biotech companies that are coming up with these new products. Um, and it's exciting uh, for us. A, a small percentage uh, of uh, patient uh, population uh, needs those, uh, those uh, products. Um, most of the time, our, our regular conservative uh, care that we offer here will, will heal the wounds. Um, often a uh, uh, sort of a rule of thumb is if your wound doesn't get better by about half the size in a month, then you may be eligible for some of these other kind of special dressings. Um, most of them, uh, there are many out there, most, most of them can be applied right here in the, in the wound center. Uh, some of them are specialty dressings where they're actually applied in the operating room by one of our uh, a surgeon, a podiatry surgeon or general surgeon. Uh, but uh, most of them have a couple of layers uh, involved. Uh, uh, the, the, our skin has two layers. We have a superficial layer and a deeper layer. Uh, the, the deeper layer has, has cells and, and, and collagen and, and different, uh, um, uh, different uh, uh, chemicals that, that help produce uh, or help heal the wound. And so a lot of times these live skin um, um, uh, or biologic dressings have those. Uh, they're often they often come from uh, placenta membranes, mm -hmm. and and uh, some of them come from uh, uh, infant foreskin. Uh, the The idea is is they get these tissues uh, that don't have any any blood vessels involved. So the the likelihood of transmitting any kind of infectious disease is very low we don't see that very much at all mm -hmm. and the likelihood of having some kind of reaction to the to the um, uh, dressing is is very low uh, so it's a little different than say a kidney transplant or a liver transplant right. um, but but a lot of these chronic wounds uh, uh, 
just don't have or the body's not able to to deliver these new cells and these new proteins uh, to the wound area so this is a way that we can actually apply those cells and proteins on the wound it becomes absorbed into the wound it's not like a uh, skin graft where right. we just put it on and close Throw it shut it. and it's yeah. all done yeah. it, it, it's it absorbs into the wound so mm -hmm. you still have a wound but then that wound now has those those proteins and cells that now can sort of uh, like stem cells they can sort of grow and, and develop into the, the various cells that are needed to, to make new skin and, and heal the wound I don't know about anybody else but this science stuff fascinates me um, the negative pressure wound therapy what is that and how does it work um, that this is for pressure wounds I'm assuming yes no we use uh -huh. we use uh, we use negative pressure mm -hmm. for all types of oh. wounds and actually our our uh, uh, surgeon colleagues in the hospital um, have become very fond of uh, negative mm -hmm. pressure therapy and they use it for uh, complicated surgical wounds, uh, say a, a surgical wound that they're not able to to uh, close um, primarily and they have to leave it open because of infection reasons or whatever, they have to leave it open, uh, they'll often use a, a wound vac, they'll often put the wound vac on for the first time in the operating room. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's widely used in the hospital and in, in the wound right. center. Um, all of uh, our nurses and most of the home health nurses that come out to people's houses are, are familiar with wound vacs or, or this negative pressure uh, mm -hmm. therapy. Uh, it's, it, it, it's basically used for larger or deeper wounds, especially wounds that drain a lot, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's basically a, a foam, uh, a special type of foam that goes over the wound uh, and that foam is then attached to a small hose that goes to a, a small machine and that machine once it's turned on once you you uh, develop a seal over that black foam uh, with some special type of uh, I call it saran wrap type mm -hmm. of uh, dressing uh, that sticks to the skin and, and creates a seal we turn that that uh, uh, machine on and it creates a vacuum uh, so that hence the the name negative pressure uh, creates a, a small vacuum and in doing so it uh, all of the the fluid that's that's uh, produced by that wound by those tissues gets drained into a canister that's that's in in that uh, uh, small machine uh, and the negative pressure has also been shown in addition to just removing the fluid and keeping the wound bed moist uh, that negative pressure has been shown to stimulate new blood vessel growth and stimulate new uh, what we call granulation tissue which is that tissue that then forms uh, to fill up a, an open wound so that the skin can uh, uh, form over the top of it uh, and it, it's been around for for many years now and, and, and it works great. Alright, talk, let's talk about compression therapy, it sounds like the opposite of Instead of sexing, you're pushing, right? So, what is compression therapy, and what does that involve? Compression therapy is probably our most commonly used therapy here at the wound center. As a, uh, it's most uh, often used for venous disease or people that have swelling in their legs and their feet, and they have an ulcer that's associated with that. Uh, as I said, you know, 25 million people, you know, in the country have some side, some sort of venous insufficiency. Uh, and it often leads to, to wounds. Uh, um, the compression therapy is, is usually a multi-layer type of wrap. It's not just a, it's not just a, a ace bandage or, or you know yeah. something like that. It's, it's a, a multi-layer wrap. Uh, sometimes the first layer has a, a medication, calamine lotion or zinc oxide to help mm -hmm. protect the skin. Sometimes the first layer is cotton. Uh, but the multi-layer is, is put on in a, in a a certain way and and that's why we have RNs that are work at this clinic because you have to be trained to put these wraps on the appropriate way uh, there has to be a certain amount of compression at the ankle and then that compression slowly uh, decreases as it gets closer to the knee um, and there's specific ways to put this uh, compression on but by putting the compression on from the toes all the way to the knee it helps it helps uh, push that fluid that's in the leg up 
higher than the knee and so that the body can reaccumulate that fluid and, and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And it also provides a, an outside pressure so that uh, the, the leg doesn't continue to, to swell up as, as days go on. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our patients wear the compression therapy for a week at a time and uh, in, in we often have dressings over the wounds. Uh, as we talked about, they might be silver dressings or other kinds of dressings. Uh, they might have biologic dressings under there, but uh, in addition to the dressing, we have the compression if, if the swelling is an issue. Um, and, and that's the, the key, probably more so than some of these special dressings, compression is the key to healing most of these uh, uh, venous uh, wounds. Mm -hmm. What is wound debridement? Is it debridement or debridement? Debridement, debridement. debridement. You say tomato, debridement, tomato. I say debridement. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, is it? How does it work? <laughs> well, there, there's there's types of uh, there's types of uh, several types of debridement. Uh, a common type of debridement people uh, may be familiar with is is done by our general surgeons in the operating room. You know, if if a wound or or uh, area has dead tissue, um, then the surgeon cuts out the dead tissue. Um, now that's the extreme case of debridement, uh, and it's usually done when the wound uh, is large and infected, um, and they're getting rid of all of the, the bad tissue. But in doing that, they get rid of some of the good tissue too, because they want the wound to be all good, healthy tissue. Um, what we do here in the wound center often is, is a much simpler version of, of uh, that debridement. We, we, uh, we take a, either a scalpel or we take a, what we call a curette, which is kind of like a, uh, I tell people it's like an ice cream scooper with, with sharp edges, mm -hmm. and we scrape along the top of the wound um, to get rid of the, 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 the debris and some of the, the superficial dead tissue that might be on a wound. Sometimes we use, uh, sometimes we use uh, scissors and, and forceps, but we try not to make it painful. <laughs> um, our, our wound centers that, that don't uh, um, get people to come back, uh, they make it, painful. they usually make it painful and nobody wants to come back if it's painful. So uh, it's probably one of the most anxious uh, or anxiety um, uh, producing, you know, uh, effects that, that people have when they've never been here before because they think it's going to hurt. Um, but we use a, a topical lidocaine. We don't use needles. We don't inject the skin around the wound. Uh, uh, we just use a topical lidocaine gel and we let that sit for a few minutes. And um, that kind of helps numb the wound bed. Uh, and then we'll, we'll just real gently and, and we go slow. We do it gently. Uh, if it begins to hurt, we stop. Um, because most of the time with these wounds, as we start to treat the wounds and as the wound becomes less uh, angry and inflamed, it becomes less sensitive. Mm. And so as we, so sometimes uh, I, I'm not able to debride the first time or two because it's just too sensitive and too painful and, and, and we won't push it, we won't do that. Uh, but if uh, uh, once the wound begins to heal and, and becomes less sensitive, then we're able to do more. And, and we, we we do that so that we, we it helps stimulate uh, 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 new new tissue growth in that wound. It helps get rid of the bacteria that might be on the surface of the wound, uh, and it's just been shown um, that regular uh, debridement of these chronic wounds will will help uh, heal the tissue um, in in less uh, uh, less um, uh, you know cases that, that require sort of less uh, time uh, uh, or we have more time to, to deal with, there's no infection or anything like that, there are certain medications that we can put on topically that, that help to breed the wound uh, and there's no sharp instruments involved, it's just a topical medicine, but that's a slower process. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes weeks uh, rather than you know, a few minutes. We have a lot of love coming in here. With people uh. saying, hi, hi, Laura. Thank you for turning <laughs> in, tuning in. And Mary Lou, you're welcome. Thank you for being here, too. Um, one basic question that I think will probably come up in most people's minds when they think about this, what can they do to avoid having to come see a specialist like you? Not that you're not a wonderful person to come and see, but if you can avoid it, you want to. What, what advice would you give them to try to avoid ending up here? Uh, the, 
most of the time uh, um, a, a few things a few again it's 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 common myths that are out there uh, people think that that uh, hydrogen peroxide cleaning their wound with hydrogen peroxide or betadine or even alcohol which hurts uh, they think that's a good thing they think that they're doing themselves a, a favor by killing all the <laughs> germs uh, and it I, I won't uh, go against them doing it once or twice uh, but it's been shown that those uh, those chemicals will actually stop the wound from healing mm -hmm. so people that are doing it day in and day out uh, they're actually they're actually keeping that wound open sometimes uh, some people will heal through that anyway but um, it's a common reason that wounds won't heal so I tell people just gentle soap and water um, clean their wounds that way um, it's it's just as well it's been shown to, to work just as well as, as the the hydrogen peroxide or anything else uh, and it'll allow the wound to heal so cleaning the wound gently uh, like that and then uh, keeping it covered so um, using you know sometimes all we have is some gauze or a band-aid I tell people uh, uh, you know they make the abdominal pads uh, 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 that they're kind of a fancy dressing, an expensive dressing, but uh, people get embarrassed. But we tell people all the time that a feminine pad works as a great dressing. If it's if the wound is draining enough that the band aid doesn't work, uh, some kind of feminine pad works great. Uh, works as a, a great bandage. So if we're keeping the wound, American ingenuity. Yes, and it's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if we're keeping the wound covered uh, all the time, don't let it dry out. Don't let it uh, develop a scab. Uh, because often that scab uh, holds in any kind of bacteria and infection that might be there and then that infection or bacteria has nowhere else to go but deeper into your tissue and that causes an infection uh, in the tissue makes the wound big, bigger deeper uh, so we don't like scabs uh, mm -hmm. we like to keep the wounds covered and moist and like I said gentle cleaning uh, most of the times those are things that will prevent a small wound from getting bigger um, Okay, well, great. I think we've reached the end of our time. I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule today to do this. This post will live on the North Bay Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash North Bay Healthcare. And we'll see you in a couple weeks for our next chat. Thank you. Thank you.